Hello, welcome to a Vox Commando demonstration. Um, I've been working on the USB UIRT plugin, and um, I think that you'll be quite interested to see how easy it is now to learn infrared codes using Vox Commando. Uh, if you have a USB UIRT and you've tried to learn codes before, you probably know that it's not a lot of fun and it can be quite time consuming and uh, then organizing the codes afterwards is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to show you a better way to do it. With Vox Commando, we can use voice commands to tell it um, first what remote we want to store codes for, and then what button, and then we uh, can actually learn the code. So the, the codes will be stored in our map editor. And you can see right now I'm starting with an empty map editor. I have nothing in there for the sake of this demonstration it will be creating tables and storing infrared codes under uh, various button names in here. Um, we do have the plugin window here, which can be useful, uh, especially when learning codes. And uh, I'll just show you from the point of view of this, when we click learn manually, then we, by the way, this is my USB uh, here, and you should see the light lighting up when I'm learning codes or when it's sending codes. Button saved. saved. Okay. And you'll see here the code appears. And while the button is being learned, there are some other information here in terms of percent and accuracy and all of that. So I'll just start off with a demo. Um, I want to learn buttons for my TV remote. Ready, Ready to, learn to learn buttons, buttons for your TV. TV. Learn button power. Ready, Ready. Press, press power. Power, power button, button saved. saved. So you'll see it shows the code that was learned here. I'm using the USB UIRT mode because it creates a shorter code. Uh, it's also possible to use the pronto mode. And if I look in our map editor now, you'll see that we've created a table for TV and stored the power button. So I'll just do a couple more codes for power button uh, for the TV. Learn button menu. Ready, Ready. Press, press menu. menu. Code, Code is too short. short. Say, try, try again. again. Try again. Pay attention. Try again. Ready, Ready. Press, press menu. Menu, menu button, button saved. saved. Learn button volume up. Ready, Ready. Press, press volume up. Volume, volume up, up button saved. saved. Learn button volume down. Ready, Ready. Press, press volume down. down. Code, code is too short. short. Say, Say try, try again. again. Try again. Ready, Ready. Press, press volume down. down. Volume, volume down, down button down. saved. Learn button mute. Ready, Ready. Press, press mute. Mute, mute button, button saved. Test that button. Test that button. Ignore me. So um, it, when I don't aim the remote properly, uh, Vox is detecting that the code is coming back as something that's too short to be a likely candidate for the infrared code. And uh, I'm able to say, learn again. Um, although if you are able to aim the remote accurately, that doesn't happen very often. Um, trying to look at the TV and the computer and the window at the same time. So. Um, I'll just also mention that you can see now that these codes are appearing as we learn them according to the names that we give them. And if we want to relearn a code, we can because the maps, when you add a table to the map, if it's already there, it will overwrite it. Learn button power. Ready, Ready. Press, press power. power. Code, code is too short. short. Say, Say try, try again. again. 
Try again. Ready, press power. Power button saved. Test that button. Test that button. I want to learn codes for my DVD. Ready to learn buttons for your DVD? Learn button power. Ready, press power. Power button saved. Learn button play. Ready, press play. Play button saved. Vox off. Now I have also a remote here for my infrared uh, receiver on my fan. And this, uh, this fan and a lot of other fans and air conditioners work differently from normal remotes. They only send a very short burst. So it's possible to tell the plugin, the USB UIRT plugin that we want to learn in burst mode. So rather than it expecting a stream of values where it works its way up to a confidence of 100%, it'll actually accept the first short burst as long as the quality is high enough. So you can specify, I want a quality of at least 95% and it'll accept that. So uh, in my action, when I tell it I want to learn codes for the fan, I'm setting that burst mode. I want to learn codes for my fan remote. Ready to learn buttons for your fan. Learn button power. Ready, press power. Power button saved. Test that button. Learn button speed. Ready, press speed. Speed button saved. Test that button. Learn button timer. Ready, press timer. Timer button saved. Ignore me. And then I can, uh, here you can see our fan table now has these three values stored. And um, I'll go back to the TV and just throw a couple more in there. Um, so maybe the arrows. Pay attention. I want to learn buttons for my TV. Ready to learn buttons for your TV. Learn button arrow up. Ready, press arrow up. Arrow up button saved. Learn button arrow down. Ready, press arrow down. Arrow down button saved. Learn button arrow left. Ready, press arrow left. Arrow left button saved. Learn button arrow right. Ready, press arrow right. Arrow right button saved. Box off. Okay, so now we have learned these codes and how do we use them? Um, I can close this window. We have another video on map editor. So if you're not familiar with the map editor, you can check that out. But uh, I'll show you, it's pretty straightforward, really, how to use these codes. Uh, I have an act, uh, a command here with a single action, which is USB UIRT dot send. And as the first parameter, it, it expects the IR code. So that would be this. And all we need to do in order to use the map is to drag from this icon into our action. So now when I click save and execute, it will send the menu code. And when I click it again, it'll send the menu code, which closes the menu. And if we wanted to use the volume, volume up, we could send this. You can see the volume, hopefully you can see the volume there is at three. And if we wanted to hold the button down for a long time, it's basically sending the code over and over again. I'll, I'll put down 20 here. Now the volume won't actually go up to 20. 
but it will go up a certain amount. There you see it's gone up to 19. And if we wanted to, um, for example, if we wanted to send an arrow up, but we wanted to send it twice, then we would actually probably send it uh, once or twice uh, in the action, but the action itself we would loop because the um, when an action loops, it actually pauses a short time between sends. So this is sort of a continuous stream of the code repeating, whereas if I put a number in the action repeat, it will send a burst and then stop and then send a burst and then stop. So that would be give you more control if you wanted to raise the volume exactly two, uh, this would probably work. Let's say uh, I want to raise it five times. So you can see it's gone up to 25. And now if I want to lower it, drag my volume down here and test it. It's gone down to 20. Okay, so now um, another thing that we might want to do rather than using these uh, codes using the remapped variables is to just use them in a payload XML so that we can get access to all of these commands with a single voice command. So to do that, uh, we have a function on the map editor now where we can export to payload XML. And you can either uh, select to have the key column stored as the phrase. So in this case, it makes sense. We want the key column, which is the name of the button to be the phrase or what we're saying. Uh, we do have the option of sort of reversing the columns, but in, in this case, we're not gonna do that. So I'll choose key to phrase, which means of course that value gets saved as value. And then I'll save this as a demo IR codes. And I do not want to use subset matching because I want to say the exact button name. I don't want there to be any confusion if I say down, whether I'm talking about volume down or arrow down. I, I'm going to want to say press button arrow down. So no subset matching. Okay, so nine items were saved to demo ircodes.xml. And now I can create, here I'll create a group with a test command, test tv ir payloads. And I'll give it the phrase, um, press TV button, and then choose payload from XML, value phrase, go into properties by double clicking that, browse to our file, um, demo IR codes, and we can open edit this to see that those same buttons that were in our map have now been, the, the key column has been mapped to the phrases and the value is the infrared code. Save this. And now I can immediately start testing this using uh, the phrase press TV button and then one of these. Press TV button menu. Press TV button, oh, <laughs> pardon me. That was foolish of me. I do need to tell the command what to do. <laughs> so we want UUIR, USB UIRT send, payload one. Pardon me for that silly mistake. Press TV button menu. 
Press TV button, arrow down. Press TV button, arrow down. Press TV button, arrow right. Press TV button, menu. Press TV button, volume up. Press TV button, power. There you have it. Um, just a quick note that, of course, you can also use the USB UIRT uh, as an input device. So if you have something like, for example, the well, any remote, but as an example, I'll use my Microsoft uh, Media Center remote because it has, I've already defined how the keys are mapped. When I press buttons up, right, down, left, enter, uh, mute, play, etc. These get mapped to events, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in another video. Thanks for watching.